Just the last thing to finish off then. Got the sine graph, we've got the cosine graph. What's left? Tangent, tangent graph, okay. So the way to get the tangent graph, a little bit more awkward, but I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be okay. We need to come back to this triangle here. Remember the triangle which we've got over there in the, in the um, circle? Okay, just literally pull that triangle out and we've got it here, okay? So what did we say x was equal to? Good, yeah, so x was equivalent to the cosine of whatever angle we've moved through. That's just the trigonometry part, okay? And therefore the y was equal to, good, the sine of whatever angle we've moved through. Okay, good. So, so, let's just think, let's just think about this right angle triangle. We can get a couple of, like, useful identities out of this. First things first, if I was going to apply Pythagoras to this right angle triangle, like it's right angled, I could apply Pythagoras to it, um, what would it be in terms of cos and sine? Um, square square equals Perfect, you see that? So I just simply take this side squared. Yeah, you might recognise that. So I take this side, so y, I square it. I add it to this side, which is x, and I square it, and I get this side squared, which is just 1, 1 squared, just 1, okay? So y is equal to the sine, so I get sine of theta, now I could write sine of theta like this, sine of theta, I want it all squared, so I could put a big bracket around it and then put that. But I don't know, that kind of looks a bit clunky. You happy, like big brackets? Yeah, perfect, do you know why? Okay, because it's exactly this reason. Because I don't want to keep writing loads and loads of brackets, okay, if I get rid of those brackets, some people are lazy. Now you notice when I write my sines and my coses, I always put brackets around the angle. But some people are quite lazy and they just write that, okay? Now if I go sine theta squared, let me just move that down a bit a bit, sine theta squared, what do I mean? Do I mean the whole thing squared, or do I just mean the angle squared? When we write it like that, that means it's the angle squared. Yeah, exactly, because it gets a bit confusing, right? That's not what I mean here. I want the whole thing being squared. To illustrate that, without having to put big brackets around it, I just simply put the squared next to the sine, okay? Because the sine is the function, Okay, I want the whole thing being squared, so I just write it like that. So if you ever see that, it means the whole thing being squared. You happy with that? Okay, so it'd be sine squared theta, okay, plus my x squared, but that's going to be cos, and I want cos of theta all squared, so I'm going to go cos squared theta equals 1. Okay, so that's my first identity. Now just hands up, who in here has seen that before? Yeah? Okay, so three of you. Okay, so that's one identity, that's one identity. Just store that in the back of your minds, okay? But remember, I want tan, okay? So this is just a right angle triangle. How would I ordinarily get tan? What would I have to compare? Yeah, exactly, because this is the angle, okay? So if I want tan of that angle, I'm going to have to compare the opposite, which is y, to the adjacent, which is x, okay? And I know that y is sine of theta. That's literally by my definition, which I came up with. And my x is my cos of theta. So in other words, I'm saying that tan of theta is equal to the sine of theta divided by the cos of theta. Okay? You happy with that? Right? Now, actually, strictly speaking here, I should put three lines instead of two for my equals. Does anybody know why? Uh, so here, you notice I've changed two lines, which were equals, to now three lines. And same thing up here. Does anybody know why? What's the difference between this versus this? Denise, do you reckon you know? Um, I don't know how they would explain it, but it used to be like Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So, does, so this thing on the left-hand side, how would we say that in words? Equal. equal to, yeah? Literally the same as. Okay, so you've got equal to, okay? How would you say this thing? Does anybody know? We'd say equivalent to. Does it make sense? Good question. They're similar. But in mathematics, it means a very, very different thing, or subtly different thing, not very different, okay? Now, if you just wanted to stick an equal sign there, that would be fine, because that would be true, okay? But if we use three lines, it means equivalent to. In other words, for every single value that I stick in here, it would always be true, OK? 
Okay, so let me illustrate by an example, right? If I wrote something down with an equals, for example, let's say um, 3x plus 1 equals, I don't know, let's say 7. Okay, equals 7, right? What would the value of x that works in this equation be? Yeah. So what this means, here I've used an equal to symbol, okay? In other words, there's only one or a particular set of values that works in this equation, okay? I couldn't just go and stick any value of x in here because it wouldn't always hold true. So when I choose equal to is if there's just a very finite set of values that would work in here, okay? So this would be a finite set. So what do I mean by finite set? I mean like one value or two value or three values. So it might be only like a handful of values that work in this equation, all right? So when I use equivalent to, for example, this thing here, okay, so theta is now my variable, it means it is true for every single possible value, okay? Every single possible value that I want to stick in here would always hold true. Okay, so equal to is, only, is when it's true for only like a couple of values. Equivalent true is when it's true for every value. Okay, so for all values. Does that make sense between the difference? Yeah, so it's only a subtle thing, but sometimes I might write this down, sometimes I might write this down. By the way, if you're not sure, go with equals. Okay, because that will always be hold true. Like there'll always be a finite set, even if every single value works. Okay? So if you're not sure which one you should use, just stick with equals. Okay? But strictly speaking, you should write 3 there because it's true for every single value. Make sense? Good. Fantastic. All right, fine. So now I've got my relationship. Can I rub this off? Yep. Now I've got my relationship, which I'm after. So I know now tan can be achieved by just taking whatever my sine value is and dividing it by my cos value. Okay? So I've got that. Right? So all I need to do is draw a new set of galaxies underneath. You notice how I've laid this out. I've done my sine graph at the top, my cos graph underneath. So now I'm just in a position where I can draw my tan value. I'm going to try and line them up. So this is going to be tan of my angle. Uh, along here I'm going to have my angle, okay? And my angles are going to go from 0 to 360. So I'll try and line them up. So that's 0, that's 90, that's 180, that's 270. And there's my 360, okay? So you can see how I've kind of lined them up, Just kind of lined them up, right? So what I need to do, to find my tan value, I take my sine value and divide it by my cos value. So as an example, as zero, if I want tan of zero, let me write it on the right-hand side, if I want tan of zero, okay, that should be my sine value at zero, so sine of zero, divided by my cos of zero, okay, my cos of zero. So let's work it out, okay. What is, what is my sine of zero? It's just zero, right, it's just there, okay. So this is equal to zero, okay. What's my cos of zero? Good, my cos of zero is one, okay. What is zero divided by one? It's just zero, yeah. If I take zero and divide it into one thing, start off with nothing, divide amongst one person, that person's still got nothing, all right? So in other words, my tan of zero is zero, okay? Let's have a look then. 90, my 90 degrees one. So my 90 degrees, so tan of 90, okay? If I take my sine of 90, what's that equal to? It's equal to one, good. What's my cos of 90? Zero. Now have a think. What's 1 divided by 0? Uh, yeah, so it doesn't hold a value. I mean, what you're literally saying there is you start off with one thing and then you try and divide it amongst nobody. Well, if there's nobody there, how much does each person... It's an awkward question. Are you happy? Another way you can think about this is how many times does 0 fit into 1? Okay? Does zero fit into one once? Yeah, like it goes into one. Does it go in twice? Yeah. Does it go in three times? Yeah. So zero can actually go into one as many times as you like. Hence why we tend to say it's infinite. But actually if you think about the graph, 
1 over x. Does anybody remember what the graph 1 over x looks like? What does the graph 1 over x look like? Good, it's the butterfly graph. Yeah, so remember, you need to know how to, that, how to draw that graph, right? And if you remember, we said at zero, it doesn't hold a value, okay? In other words, it's asymptotic. So you can see that as you move towards zero from the right-hand side, are you happy that graph shoots off in the positive infinity direction? But if you move from this side, if you move from the left, are you happy that graph shoots off in the negative infinity direction? So in other words, we say one divided by zero is plus or minus infinity, okay? The way which we represent on the graph, very simply, is just through an asymptote, okay? So a dotted line, like this. That make sense? Yeah. So in other words, it never reached that value. It's, it's plus or minus infinity, and we've just got to consider which way it goes, okay? Right, okay, 180. Let's go with this. Uh, so we think about the sine of 180, which is 0 divided by the cos of 180, which is negative 1, so therefore the, cos, the tan of 180 is 0. Perfect. Okay, what about the tan of 270? It's going to be the sine of 270, which is negative 1, divided by the cos of 270, which is... So ne negative 1 divided by 0 is... Yeah, plus or minus infinity again. So again, it's another asymptote. All right. Finally, for 360, okay, we get the sine of 360, which is... And then divide that by the cos of 360, which is 0 divided by 1, which is 0. Perfect. Okay. So already we start to get this shape going on. It's starting to look a bit weird. Okay. Okay. Let's finish this off then. All I need to do is consider what's happening in each region. Okay. So let's have a think. Between 0 and 90, between 0 and 90, we need to see whether it's positive or negative. So have a look. The sine value between 0 and 90 is positive. And the cos value between 0 and 90 is positive. So we get a positive, and we're dividing it by positive, yeah? Positive divided by positive, which is equal to a positive. So in other words, it's in this region up here, okay? Now, I know that my graph has to approach this asymptote. It represents plus or minus infinity. And because it grows in positive, it must grow in the positive direction. Make sense? Notice I haven't put any values on the y-axis because it shoots off to infinity. That doesn't make any meaning, okay? All right, let's have a look. What's happening between 90 and 180? Well, the sine graph between 90 and 180 is positive. But the cos graph between 90 and 180 is... So what's a positive divided by a negative? Negative, okay? So we know that it's got to be negative, like that. And again, it's got to shoot off to this asymptote. Yeah, it's got to shoot off to this asymptote. Right? Okay, tell me then, between 180 and 270, what is the sine graph doing? It's negative. What's the cos graph doing between 180 and 270? Negative. What's a negative divided by a negative? It's got to be a positive. So therefore, the tan graph has got to be positive as well. All right? Finally, between 270 and 360, what's the sine graph doing? What's the cos graph doing? So what's a negative divided by a positive? It's got to be a negative. Okay? So you're happy you get this weird shape for the tan graph, okay? Really weird shape for the tan graph. And you're happy it's just going to repeat again and again and again and again and again, okay? Now you're happy every 90 degrees something interesting still happens, okay? So zero goes to the axis. 90 degrees later, in this case, it's just an asymptote, okay? Then 90 degrees later goes to the axis. 90 degrees later, asymptote. 90 degrees later goes to the x-axis. No, no. So effectively, the last sort of few minutes, okay, everything that we've done here, you just need to know how to draw that, that, and that. Okay? You don't need to go through all this process. But are you happy I needed to go through all that process? Otherwise, you'd be like, what? Yeah? yeah? 